So in this episode, we're going to cover the install of the Martin Jerry switches and dimmers in the home. And then we'll solve that issue of that long press we want to do to turn off the light switch in the hallway. So we are going to be doing a little bit of minor electrical work. So if you're not that familiar with doing any switch replacements or opening up electrical boxes in the home, you probably want to do consult an electrician or say another family member that is familiar with doing it. Here in the United States, we are allowed to swap out light switches and do some minor electrical work without being an electrician, of course. With that said, do make sure the breaker is turned off. Double check, triple check, do what you need to do. Check with a meter or a non-contact voltage meter and find out if that circuit is really turned off. And anytime you have any doubt, do consult an electrician. And, well, if you don't want to consult an electrician and you just want to deal with low voltage, well, you can always get some PCBs made at PCB Way. They got some high quality PCB boards with different projects and different products. You can do your own little custom designs and get them shipped straight to your door. They always got some deals going on, some great prices. Check them out, PCB Way. So as we did mention in episode one, we're going to be using the Martin Jerry dimmers and switches. We do like the look of them and how easy they are to integrate with Home Assistant. Now, of course, we are flashing them using to your convert and just really getting our out of the cloud because we're going to put Tasmodo and or ESP Home on them and integrate them right into Home Assistant for fast local control. Now, I know there are some people out there will say, well, it's Wi-Fi devices. Well, I can tell you, I have just about 100 Wi-Fi devices on my personal network from various ESP sensors to switches and everything using two UniFi access points and this things just work. Now, of course, you will can use, say, Zigbee or Z-Wave or whatever you'd like to use and integrate it straight into Home Assistant because you don't have to follow exactly what we're doing, but we're going to show you how to do it with MQTT and bring things into Home Assistant. And because we're trying to keep things on a tight budget and just make things work reliably. So if you haven't checked out the two-year convert process, we'll leave all the links down below, but we'll flash this switch and we're going to bring it up and fire it up in Tasmodo. Now the switch we're using here for this example is the Martin Jerry three-way switch. Now once it does come up on your Wi-Fi, you get it configured following the two-year convert. It's going to come up as a generic module. So the first thing you're going to, want to do is go to your configuration and go to configure MQTT. And then for the host, that's going to be the IP address of your home assistant Raspberry Pi, which Hopefully you did set that as a static IP. If not, make sure you do put a static IP because you can see here if your IP address is changed, then that's going to be a big problem. You have to change that on all your different devices. Just consult your router or whatever DHCP server you're using and give it a reserved IP. And that way that IP address never changes. So we're going to put in our Raspberry Pi address. You can leave the port the same and don't change the client you will need to change the user ID. And that's going to be the user ID, because I've already forgotten, that's in your MQTT add-on inside Home Assistant. Now, if you did use the default way of not hard coding your ID and password, then of course it's going to be the ID and password you added to Home Assistant itself. So put this in and we'll do MQT DIY and we'll make sure that is our password. Now for the topic, don't get confused. It's really just make it a unique name and do some type of shorthand name because it will come up on your router as that name. So we're gonna go ahead and do ours for switch SW underscore kitchen light. And that way all those stay grouped and I can instantly see what those are when we're looking at host names on the router. Now for the full topic, you'll leave that the same. And then you'll go ahead and hit save. 
And just to verify that it does connect, you'll go to the console and look on the console. You are looking for this attempting connection and then MQTT connected. And that way you do know it is working. If you do get an attempt and it says keep retrying, you will have to go change your MQT information. Maybe you got your IP address wrong or an ID and user password is wrong. So we still don't have a switch button yet. So we'll go to the Tasmodo device template repo and we'll look for our device and is the Martin Jerry three way. And we'll just take and we'll hit copy on this little window here. We'll flip back to our switch, go to configuration, go to configure other, and we'll override it over this template and we'll click the activate button. And the friendly name, that's going to be the name that's going to show up in Home Assistant. So we'll give it a proper name of Kitchen Light. Go ahead and hit save. And do make sure that Activate is checked. Now, once it's rebooted, you'll notice we do have an off status, as well as we do have a toggle button. Now, as of right now, the light is purple. It may be hard to see, and it does change to blue. Well, to correct that, if we look on the repo page, and there is some additional commands, and this can vary per switch. There is a command we need to make sure and do a switch mode one. And these are simply, you can just copy them in to the console. And we're going to follow our Martin Jerry dimmers that we're going to be putting in. And this is the rule. It has the red LED lit when the light is off and the blue is lit when the light is on. So we'll simply copy and paste this and paste it into the console. Hit enter and then type in rule one space one that will make sure to activate that rule. And then we can give it a try. We hit toggle. And now you can see up above that when the light is off, the LED on the front turns red. And then we turn it on, it does turn blue. So well, how do we get it into Home Assistant? Well, that's pretty simple to do. First, we need to make sure in Home Assistant itself, if you go to configuration, then go to integrations. And we'll get this out the way right quick. You'll notice that it has an MQTT configure because Home Assistant is not connected to MQTT. And MQTT is really all it is, is just a handler of messages, a centralized hub. It's sitting there waiting for messages to be sent from Home Assistant, and then it's going to send it to a switch. It just routes it much like, say, a post office would. Home Assistant's going to send a letter over, and then the broker... MQTT is going to send that letter over to the switch and tell it to turn on. And then the switch is going to send the letter back to the broker and the broker is going to let Home Assistant know that that switch turned on. It's pretty simple stuff and it happens very quickly in the background. So we'll hit configure and we'll make sure and do enable discovery because we're going to do this switch as discovery. Hit submit, success and finish. So to get it into Home Assistant, we'll go to the console. And you'll want to type in set option 19, then space and one. And what that's going to do is going to tell the switch to flip into auto discovery mode. And it's going to tell Home Assistant that a new switch is available. So hit enter. Give it a second. The switch is going to reboot. So once you see all of this, you'll know it's going to be added into Home Assistant. So we'll flip back to Home Assistant. Go to our overview. And look at that. There's our kitchen light. Let's pull it up on the down camera again so you guys can see it. And we'll turn it off. And you can see the red light does change and it turns on. And it's that simple to add a light switch into Home Assistant. And it all happens locally without relying on the internet because that's what we try to do with the goal of everything trying to stay local and be ours and not have to cross the internet and be in someone else's cloud to rely to turn on our light switches that are simply across the room. So we've had this question multiple times of how do you set up switches and test them on the bench before you put them in the wall easily? Well, there's a couple different ways. You can use, say, an old PC power supply cord with the ends cut off and you can just strip it back and connect it to the switch itself, say using some Wago connectors. 
but it's not really safe because sometimes in haste you accidentally forget you left it plugged in and then you grab the wire and well, we know what all happens. So if you want something really safe and really simple and don't mind spending a few extra dollars on safety, I would highly suggest the Cliff Quick Test that we use. It's a real cool little device is it does power up and power shows on the actual LED lit up right here and there are some spring-loaded doors that you push up and you do put the wires and they are color-coded based on the country. They do have one for the EU as well. This is the US model and you simply load in the wires for the, the switch. I do have the output of the switch capped off and that way if, when we do test the switch turning it on and off we won't have live electricity. The really cool thing about it is you can touch all of these while the door is open. And of course when the door is closed and you can't touch them anyway, that's when the pins get activated with electricity. So it makes it a real easy way and that way you don't end up getting your hand shocked because once you open the door to pull the wires out, it de-energizes the switch. Really cool little device. You can see you just close the door and then the switch will come on. So if you're going to be doing a bunch of switches, I highly recommend getting you a Cliff Quick Test. So last but not least, let's tackle that hallway where we can long press the light switch and turn off the entry light without having to go all the way back down the hallway like we talked about in episode one. So you can do this in many different ways. In this example on the bench here to make it easier to visualize and see, we're going to show you how to use a light switch to long press that way you can turn off a lamp plug across the room. So as you can see here we do have the Martin Jerry three-way switch. It is currently turned off. You can see the red LED and as well as the living room lamp plug is turned off as well. We do have them configured just like we showed. We can turn them on. You can see the LED does blue and of course you can turn the lamp on and LEDs light up on there. But of course who wants to walk across a room to turn off the lamp, right? This, this is 2020. So once you have them configured in Home Assistant, what we'll need to do is we'll need to jump into the console of the living room lamp. Because we need to get the topic that is listed in the console so we can apply that to a rule in the switch for the kitchen. So first in the living room lamp plug, and you can use whatever plug or whatever you'd like to use. We're just using an older Sonoff S20 plug we had here. You're going to the console and you'll want to copy the topic of one of these. Just pick one. Typically you'll see like say the results. And we'll just copy one of those out and we're just going to use a piece of it and we're going to paste that into the other console on the actual kitchen switch. And there are many ways to do this. You could do this with automations and Home Assistant and Node Red and everything else. It's just we're going to show you how to do it straight from switch to switch. It makes it much easier and simpler to do. So on the actual kitchen light switch, on your particular switch, if it is using a button, and if you don't remember how to see if it's using a button, you can go in and go to configuration, go to configure template, and if it is using a button one, then you can change that to switch one. That will be required for the short press and long press rule we're gonna do. So mine's already set to switch one. If yours was set to button one, then just go ahead and change it to switch one. And then hit save and then wait for it to reboot. Now once it reboots, you got a couple commands you need to apply. So let's jump on in the console. And you'll need to type in switch mode one space five and then go ahead and press enter. And what that's going to do is going to give us the ability to use a short and long press. Next, you'll want to do set option 32 space eight. That's going to set the time it was required that is considered for a short or a long press. That's going to give us 0.8 seconds. The default is 40, which is going to be four seconds. And you don't want to sit there and have to hold down the button for four seconds. I like to use eight. Now in this particular switch, there's already a rule in there in the rule one buffer that toggles the LED from red to blue based on the power state. 
If you want to see if you have a rule, just type in rule one and no space, nothing after it, hit enter, and then scroll over and see if there is some data in there with your rule. If you do have one in there, then it's much easier just to use one of the other rule buffers that is empty. So we'll do the same thing and type in rule two, and you can see we don't have anything in there. There's just a double quote with nothing inside of it. So now we're gonna put in rule two, our long press state. So we simply do that by typing in rule two, and say on switch one pound state equals three. And the three is a long press, two is actually a short press, but we'll get to that in another video. We'll say do publish. And here's the part where you copied that topic from the plug. So we'll paste that in and we're going to use just the first piece of it. Now, if you're not using auto discovery, then your topics will be the other way. These topics are reversed because we use auto discovery in this current version. Say CMND, that's going to be for command. We'll do power one space and then toggle and then in the rule with end on. So what's going to happen is when you do a long press, it's going to send a command over to the plug to toggle the power. So we'll hit enter. And then you want to make sure and turn the rule on by typing rule two space one. And you should see the message saying rule two is on. Now let's give it a test. You can see on the switch that we can just simply push the button and that does turn the light actually in the kitchen light on and off for the actual physical light. Now, if we did a long press, you should see the plug on the right will toggle. And there it is. It turns on, solves the issue of where you didn't have any type of wiring or anything and could not control a light from across the room. And this solves that entryway issue with us without doing any additional wiring. We just use the long press on the switch. Now just to show you in Home Assistant, you will see the correct states, even though we didn't do any type of automation in Home Assistant itself, you can still turn the light on, simple, as well as if you do long press, you'll see the living room lamp turn on. You saw it turn on up above in the video, as well as on the GUI itself. Pretty simple stuff. And no additional wiring, it works great. So that wraps it up for getting the light switches installed in Home Assistant. We've got several light switches to get installed. Hopefully you can get yours done and do some automations of doing some short presses, long presses, et cetera, whatever it might be. Stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna be doing some additional device ads and looking at different automations and several other different things to get the actual house being a smart home. Be sure and check out our links down below. It does help out. I appreciate everything. I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It helps bring new projects and products to the channel each week. Be sure and check us out on Discord if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon, and check us out in our next video. And y'all take care. Long press it to turn off, say, a lamp. This is, you know, the ground. Mm hmm is going to be together and then your neutrals, this is the white, is going to be together. Right. And it's going to be in the back and you won't see them hooked to any switches. Right. So this one has two, basically you have a hot come in mm -hmm. and then sometimes you will have a hot come in but then you may have a hot go out to like say this. Yeah. So don't let that confuse you. Or it may come from here then go to here but you just don't know. It's an in and out. Okay. But then if you, you're like, well which, which side is the load and which side is the live the mm -hmm. line yeah well if you look this one is going up to this wire and this one is going up to this wire right well you notice both of these switches are together so they're fed from the bottom go up and then out okay so this you know that this is where the juice is at and then this is where the juice is going okay pretty simple Gotcha. So the because these aren't together, so it comes in, it gets switched, and then goes out. Where's it coming in from? Another wire back there. Yeah. No, so there's look there's there's a wire actually coming in, and a wire going out, probably jumping to this plug. 
Gotcha. But these are in two separate wires, so... Right, so you know this is the output because these aren't tied together. Okay. Sometimes you'll see them where they may a wire will come here mm -hmm. and then jump to the other switch and then go out. You know, so they're just they're just jumping, they're feeding the, the juice on the bottom of the switches. Yeah. That's typically how it is. You'll see the juice fed on the bottom mm -hmm. and then come out to the top. But don't always, you know, it can be done either way. So a lot of times what I'll do, these are, these are backstabbed. Mm-hmm. Unless you can get the backstab out. That one did come out. Get the backstab out. There's your two hots. Mm -hmm. But we're actually going to cut, probably put that in the Wigo. Okay, so just to pull this out of the way. And then we'll, that, this is the and up. And then this is the up. And then we'll undo this. Why are we undoing this for? Because we're going to put a Wago in here. If you didn't want to put a Wago, you could just put your a single wire net, single wire net, call it a day. Oh, we don't need those connected to the smart switches? Yeah, they are. Oh. You would put one smart switch wired here, one smart switch wired yeah, here. Yeah, I'm saying what? Or you could just undo this and put the smart switch stuff in here. I'm just getting rid of jumpers. Gotcha. So, you basically, you at this point, you didn't have Wagos. Then you could take the smart switch. You want a dimmer in here, you said? Yeah, dimmer. Because the dimmer, and then this is the fan. You could take, because you know, ground and white, you know where those go. So ground is green, white is yep. neutral. And then the black would go, you know, if you didn't have a way go, you could stick it in here, and then take the other one and try to stick it in here. Oh, okay, right, right. And then that's that's going to get power, feed for power some, here. For some reason, I thought we were going to stab it back into the smart switch, but I forgot they came wired back. Yeah. Here. 